What got me into the conservative movement was a frustration with the growing bias of the media. The failure of the government-run education system, the lack of competition, United States constitutional-centered focus is what has led to this. The minute you're identified as someone who believes in the Constitution, someone who believes in limited government, you get a target painted on your back. Mm -hmm. This unelected bureaucratic class, which fancies itself the decision makers. Once we make up our minds to get rid of them, the national that's when we can begin to turn the United States of America around. Good day, everyone. This is Dr. David Phelps of the Freedom Founders Mastermind Community and Dentist Freedom Blueprint Podcast. Today, a conversation that I have really been looking forward to. It's with a gentleman that I get to hear from on a regular basis, but we have no interchange of dialogue. Today, for the first time, I get to speak with an advocate for freedom, Mr. Chris Salcedo. Chris, thanks for being here, sir. Pleasure, pleasure. Chris, I know I know about your background, and I know that uh, you grew up. Um, well, I, I know you you went to San Diego um, State University, correct? And you first started in uh, as a as a weatherman, air traffic. Uh, you did some acting um, along the way in your journey and evolu evolution. How did you first get started in what you're doing today as a radio? People would call you a pers radio TV personality. And I'll give you give more of your background in a second, but how did you elevate to radio TV? advocate for freedom. What, what was your interest in caring about our country the way I know you do today? Well, I, I've always, the family has always inspired a, a love of country. Uh, but what got me into the, into the conservative movement was uh, a frustration with the growing bias of the media. As you, as you pointed out, I, was, I had, had, some, had in my mind at some point in my career to try to go to Hollywood, you know, because you, you want to get some fame to, to make a difference, to have some notoriety to make a difference. That went by the wayside once I saw how, you know, we, we went from the Hollywood of John Wayne and Bob Hope, but loved America that was, even at the time when I was back in way, way many decades ago, was already on the downhill decline uh, toward anti-Americanism. So I kind of fell out of uh, music radio and, and, uh, acting into news and then from news with when that started to go downhill into a bunch of left-wing bias idiocy then i decided to create my own brand which was the chris nelsato show which was born on uh, glenn beck's the blaze and then from there it just took off so today the chris nelsato show is broadcast here in dallas fort worth wbap in Houston, also um, on their station, which is KSEV, I believe. Right. Uh, also, Newsmax TV. You can catch Chris with the with his show there uh, in the evenings. So, Chris, you're also known as the Liberty Loving Latino. I think I and and people people have a tendency to think that you know all immigrants to the country uh, are coming as we have this massive influx across the border. And and again, there are all. This country is born on immigration, but the right right kind of immigration. Um, your culture, particularly um, Latinos, we're seeing a great movement, a great groundswell of of a more of a conservative movement in that in that arena. Yes. I, well, I think so. I think a traditional. Let, let's let's compartmentalize. What the reason why I call myself a liberty loving Latino is because there are others out there who are loudmouth leftist Latinos. They are anti American. They are. Uh, they are individuals who seek the destruction of our liberties and freedoms. And they're just like those in the black community who seek the same. They're just like those in the white community who seek the same. They are bound by ideology. And the reason why I call myself a liberty loving Latino is because there's a distinction. There's a difference. And the mainstream press has done its best to try to convince Americans that if you're black and if you're Latino, if you're a quote unquote minority, which I hate the term, but if you're a minority, then you hate America and you're in for socialism and you're in for government control over your life because you can't do anything without government. So the Chris Nelsato show has been arrayed, as is, to be fair, a lot of other programs out there with minorities now as primary hosts, uh, arrayed at dispelling that despicable narrative. So that's number one. Number two, there is a significant difference between those who are coming over the border right now uh, from all over the, all over the world Blacks, Latinos uh, coming in from uh, uh, China, Yemen, Pakistan, of all different races and ethnicities and, and backgrounds. Uh, the one thing they all have in common is they're ignorant of the American system. 
And that's the way socialist Democrats like it. They want to import a whole bunch of people who are ignorant about their rights, who come from totalitarian societies, who might think, look at Nancy Pelosi and and Joe Biden and say, hey, that's not that's not as bad as where I came from and be ignorant enough to vote for these people. Because as you rightly point out, in particular in the state of Texas, the Latino community is awakening. The black community in places like Chicago, places like New York, places like California are starting to awaken as to just how deleterious the left wing side of the equation is. Chris, over 250 years ago, our country was founded by our forefathers who who put everything on the line to fight against the tyranny of the, from the King of England. How did we get to where we are today? I know that there's a lot of history there, but what, what has changed in your opinion? What are the key factors that have changed and moved us from an entrepreneurial, freedom-loving country to, I'm not gonna say it's a majority yet, but a great number of our citizens, as you just said, are ignorant of history, ignorant of the truth, and yet they're buying in to the socialist Marxist movement today that they think is is, 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 is utopia. Yeah, I think there, it's a two-tiered response to that. Number one, uh, conservatives and Republicans abandoned the government-run education system. Uh, they, they allowed this system to take hold in the United States, and it was co-opted and corrupted uh, by the left wing in this country. Uh, to where we we conservatives and Republicans are forced to finance our own political opposition, and they call it education. So uh, the failure of the government-run education system, the lack of competition, the lack of a United States constitutional-centered focus, and not to mention a Judeo-Christian focus in our education, uh, is what has led to this. And then it, what what led to that was an abandonment and a rejection of, in my opinion, God, uh, a secularization of the society. So when you have no value set, when you can't even look to the Constitution, uh, think about everything that the left opposes. They oppose the left, or they, they, the Constitution rather, they oppose God, they oppose any morality that that is anything other than government. And uh, that's a prescription for a Soviet-style, communist China-style government, which many in political power today are reinforcing and they I'll give you an example it's, it's very trite but it's very true a very concise uh, a sum, summary a functioning education system and a judeo-christian centered society doesn't elect Joe Biden doesn't elect Nancy Pelosi doesn't elect statists doesn't elect avowed socialists a, a, a people with a moral compass doesn't elect any socialist Democrat today Chris, you have a, a strong voice. You have a platform that you worked hard to achieve and obtain. What can the rest of us do who are also conservatives and believe in freedom? What, what voice can we have? Where do we carry that? We see a lot of that today where parents are, are showing up now after a year of COVID, Zoom learning at home. They're seeing what's happening in the school. So, there's, so I see that as a, as a great movement forward, step up. What else? Where, where, how do we take what we what many of us believe is definitely the wrong direction and now leave our complacency, which a lot of us have, have kind of lived in for a lot of years and actually start to move this. What, how, do, how do we do that as, as, a, as a force to be reckoned with? We have to abandon this notion of trust me government. Uh, even many on our own sides, and the, the, don't misunderstand what I'm about ready to say, many people on our side said, oh, Donald Trump's in there. Everything is solved, yeah. problem solved. And they tuned out. Uh, uh, Donald Trump's going to take care of all of this. Uh, no, uh, here's what I do know. We are, we outnumber them uh, by their very definition, elitists, socialists, communists. They are, they are an elite who believe they can rule over the rest of us. So by definition, they are a minority in this country. Those who have rejected liberty, freedom, and a, a limited constitutional government. So the majority has to awaken that uh, who was it? It was Adams who said that our our government was meant for a moral and religious people. It's unsuited to any other. And it's true. And those of us who are in the majority have to remember that the U.S. government was meant to be to participated in. And you cannot tune out. You cannot leave these school boards and your children to these school boards. You can, Trust me, government has to go away an engaged population, a population that's paying attention, rejecting 
the false press narratives that are being out there and digging for information. That's how you beat this back. I'm not sure that we have the wherewithal to do it, but that's what must happen. Yeah, the, the, the will of the people, uh, enough, enough to awaken and realize that we, we do have power. Uh, one of the quotes I, I love the most from you, and actually I incorporated, borrowed it and put it in my book, uh, Own Your Freedom, a society's worth isn't measured by how much power is seized by its government, but rather how much power is seized is reserved for its people. And in the book that you panned back in 2014, Liberty Rises, um, a, a, great, a great story, uh, science fiction, but I would say for a lot of people, uh, that book would be an easier read for people that you want to uh, help to see the light rather than uh, Ayn Rand's uh, Atlas Shrugged. Your, your book was very well written and starts out with uh, with Mr. Jack Vega, who is uh, uh, an entrepreneurial capitalist, uh, you know, who's, who's built a company and, and employs a lot of people. And he's um, in, in, the Senate, in a Senate hearing where they're coming down on him with the typical, you need to pay, pay your, sh your fair share, right? And, and he's looking in the Senate room and he sees all of its uh, grandeur. And of course, all of these senators are placed much, much higher and the peon is down below. And he's looking at that and going like, what is this? What, I mean, you know, his realization that this is, this is a bunch of BS and in your story, he's like, he's, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. You know, um, with what we have as representative government today, and we both know and we agree with many of our, our, our friends and colleagues that, that we don't really have representative government. In fact, I would say, People would say, maybe you, Chris, well, why don't you get into politics? Or David Phelps, why don't you get into politics? I see it as a meat grinder, Chris. And, and, and for people that really want to get into it and really do good, um, either, either you have to comply with those, the regime that's there, or they spit you back out. How, how do we change that? Well, I'll tell you a story about that's, that's going to be told in the coming months. I, I, I had a conversation with a member of Congress who thinks very much like we think. And this member of Congress proceeded to tell me that the minute, the minute you're identified as someone who believes in the Constitution, the minute, you believe, the minute you're identified as someone who believes in limited government, you get a target painted on your back. Mm -hmm. And all of these levers of government start attacking you. They attack your family. They attack your finances. They attack uh, your ability to support yourself. It's what many of us, what, the, the late great Rush Limbaugh deemed the deep state, what I would call permanent Washington, what uh, individuals would call the apparatchiks who believe that uh, politicians come and go, but they are forever. And until we get a majority of the American people that want to dismantle that system and understand the danger that system poses, these people aren't patriots. These people don't serve us they serve themselves, uh, and it's very, very real. Uh, unless and until we get a groundswell of the American people who are willing to dismantle the current, uh, you can't even call it a constitutional government. This government has grown beyond the consent of the governed, and we have to recognize that, and we must make sure that whoever we elect is empowered because remember, we outnumber them is empowered to get rid of this deep state, permanent Washington, unelected bureaucratic class, which fancies itself the decision makers. Once we make up our minds to get rid of them and we will stick to our guns uh, on this, then that's when we can begin to turn the United States of America around. There are plenty of elements in our own government and external uh, uh, forces that are dedicated to making sure that doesn't happen. Uh, the Great Reset, as a matter of fact, you just saw a man I call Beijing Biden. He just agreed to a worldwide minimum tax, yes. which will make sure that our people can no longer be competitive, that there is no play, there is no country that can compete against another country. And what happens when you eliminate competition, you eliminate excellence. And Mr. Biden and 136 other countries have guaranteed that excellence among the majority of the world's nations will not be accepted. If you enjoyed watching or learning from this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. If you have a question about any of my content, or this specific video, just please leave a comment down below. And as always, stay focused on your freedom. I'll see you next time.